Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is the day the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing, and we are so glad in this day. And we just pray that God will restore his blessings up on you in this seventh day of April 2021. Let us go to prayer. Father, now in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. We give you all praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Father, bless us right now. Let us hear from heaven what it is that you have to say to us today. Because Paul tells us faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. And he also said, Paul, he's taught us to a father. He said, you told him to tell us how can they hear except they have a preacher and how can he preach unless he's been sent by you to bring this gospel and expound this gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you for preachers and pastors. Bless us right now. Bless everybody who's on the sound of my voice, Father, that when they hear your word, Father, they will walk in a newness of life. Bless now. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us go to Scripture. Read Hebrews 7, verses 1 through 6. This Melchizedek was king of Salem and priest of God Most High. He met Abraham returning from the defeat of the kings and blessed him. And Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. First, the name Melchizedek means king of righteousness. Then also king of Salem means king of peace. Without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life, resembling the son of God, he remains a priest forever. Just think how great he was. Even the patriarch Abraham gave him a tenth of the plunder. Now the law requires the sinners of Levi who become priests to collect a tenth from the people, that is, from their fellow Israelites, even though they also are descended from Abraham. This man, however, did not trace his descent from Levi, yet he collected a tenth from Abraham and blessed him who had the promises. Bless you and praise you. Amen. Amen. May God add a blessing to the heroes and doers of his most holy word. Let the church everywhere where you are say amen. Today, for the time the Lord allows, we will explore three subtopics. Peace is the fruit of righteousness. Peace is the result of of love. Peace comes from knowing Jesus completely. And as you see in the graphic here before your eyes, it is very telling time for peace. Because in the world we live in now, there's so much dispute, confusion, and mistrust, and infighting, and whatever goes and flies in the face of God, we witness it now on the daily news and world news, internet and everywhere. Right now, what we need now is peace. There's a Coke commercial you say, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. Finding real peace. Lesson 12 finding real peace hebrews 6 20 b through hebrews uh, chapter 7 verse 2 down to verse 28 that is a real pandemic in today's world uh, is a lack of peace however jesus left us with a peace that goes well beyond human understanding in these words and and, and jesus spoke this in the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 14, verse 27, and he spoke these words, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, 
I do not give peace to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So Jesus Christ said, don't make room or residence for trouble in your heart. Continue to look to the hills from where all of our help comes from. All of our help comes from the Lord. Perhaps a lack or absence of peace among mankind will might be because too many don't understand the superior priesthood of Jesus. And God having made Jesus the royal high priest, we have eternal and always. Many people don't know that. So this is why we are doing these weekly Bibles. This is why we're doing Sunday school classes to, amen, to enlighten people, that the Holy Spirit might enlighten people to how God worked from the very beginning. God created the heavens and the earth, amen. The writer of Hebrews has written a letter to help you and I understand the superior priesthood and ministry of Jesus Christ to whom we find real peace and these three subtypes, which I will redundantly, amen, uh, uh, repeat, repeat, repeat them again. Peace is the fruit of righteousness. Hebrews 7, verses 1 through 10. Peace is the result of love, amen. Hebrews 7, verse 11 to 19. And peace comes from knowing God heals completely. Hebrews chapter 7, verses 20 through 28 finding real peace. As we see in the graphic here, we see a fig tree. And it is a fruit. And our first subtopic informs us peace is the fruit of righteousness. Peace is the fruit of of righteousness. I say it again. Peace is the fruit of righteousness. The writer of Hebrews uses the example of Melchizedek, one of the most mysterious people in the Bible. See, with Melchizedek, there's no record of his ancestry. Uh, there's no record that documents his genealogy of who his parents were, or where he was really born. Melchizedek was appointed by God to be the priest and king of Salem, not by Aaron or the Levitical priests who were not yet born. So he was born a man before the Levites. And he was there during the time, a man uh, of, of Abraham. Melchizedek met Abraham as Abraham was turning from defeating the kings who had kidnapped his nephew Lot. We find this in Genesis 14, verses 1 through 18. The writer of Hebrews says this. Melchizedek met Abraham returning from the defeat of the kings and blessed him. So Melchizedek met Abraham, followed Abraham's defeat of the enemies who had kidnapped his nephew Lot and his family. And Melchizedek blessed Abraham. Let us look at Melchizedek just a little closer. Melchizedek is defined as king of righteousness. We find that in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 2. Therefore, Melchizedek was the king of peace and righteousness. You and I, too, can only experience peace through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Without Jesus Christ in our life, we don't have any peace in our life. See, Jesus Christ is the source of peace in every man, woman, boy, or girl's life who will listen to his word. 
Isaiah, the prophet, says this about peace in Isaiah 37, 30, uh, chapter 32, verse 17. The fruit of that righteousness will be peace. It's only through righteousness that we will achieve and ascertain peace. Because we don't get peace with bombs, atomic bombs, hydrogen bombs, amen, uh, uh, chemical, biological warfare. That's not peace. That is destruction. See, man has this thing wrong. See, after World War II, there was no peace. After World War I, there still was no peace. After the Civil War, the war between the states, the war of 1812, amen, there was no peace. After the Vietnam War, there was no peace, amen. After Desert Storm, there was no peace. After Enduring Peace, there was no, uh, no peace. Man is not the source of our peace. Jesus is the source of our peace. If we listen to Jesus Christ speaking in John chapter 14, verse 27, he say, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. So here right now we see that Jesus is our only source of real peace. We don't find it at the United Nations. So everybody is jockeying for a position of dominance. So you won't find it there. You won't find peace at a meeting at Camp David. You won't find peace in the Congress of these United States. Our peace comes only through Jesus Christ, through the Word of God. Only Jesus can give us that perfect peace because he is our what? our superior and supreme high peace. Our uh, first Timothy 2 5 read, for there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Jesus. So here Timothy, Paul is telling Timothy, there is, for there is God, and then there's one mediator who is the Son of God, between God and mankind. And Jesus stands with in the middle, right? in the intersection point of man and God. And we get our peace, amen, through Jesus Christ. Amen. Peace, our second outline tells us in Hebrews 7, verses 11 through 19, peace is a result of love. Peace is the byproduct of love. The Bible said, love your neighbor as yourself. Prefer others before yourself. Put other folks' welfare before your own. See, this is the demonstration of love. Amen? Amen. So we see the graphic here. Uh, hands of love with hearts, which represents love, extending love. So we must extend, and we see different shades of colors in the graphic. We mean what? Love is for every. It's not reserved just for one particular group. Because Peter said, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Real peace. Peace is the result of love. Peace is the byproduct of love. Peace is the fruit of love. Amen. The writer of Hebrews asks if perfection or righteousness could be achieved through the priesthood of Levi. The answer is no. As God established another priesthood in the order and pattern of Melchizedek instead of the order, amen, of Aaron. God never intended for the Levitical priest of the Levitical priesthood to last forever. See, when that priest dies, his priesthood is gone with him, amen. When a preacher dies, he is no longer, amen, a pastor. When a minister dies, he is no longer a minister. When the minister of music dies, that minister of music is no longer a minister 
of music. David informs us God had a greater plan according to King David. And here's what he said in Psalm 110, uh, uh, verse 4. He said, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. God was talking to Jesus. He was not talking to Aaron. He was not talking to any priest of humanity. No, he was talking to Jesus. Meant that Jesus is our forever priest. He is our forever royal priesthood. See, because God gave the order for Melchizedek to be a priest forever. We don't see anywhere where Melchizedek had a thing. We don't really know where, where, he, uh, where his transportation carried him. But we know that God said, speak to David, you telling Jesus, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. In the same pattern that God laid out for Melchizedek, he gave to Jesus Christ in the higher, O Lord, Allah, I exit your name throughout the whole earth. God speaking to David in his past, referring and speaking to Jesus the common royal priesthood of God who will become our high priest eternal forever and always God is God he is the alpha and the omega he is the first and the last he is the beginning he is the preeminent of everything because he is God all by himself peace Reemphasizing is a result of love. Peace is a result of love. The God of Moses instituted the Levitical priesthood. However, perfection of being right with God could not be achieved through the law. Every time through the law of man committed sin, there had to be an animal sacrifice or animal sacrifices so if i told a lie and you know the priest only went behind the holy of holies the inner sanctum a man a man of the tabernacle once a year therefore so i had to live with that sin until the high priest went behind the curtain the innermost part a man of the sanctuary of the tabernacle so i had to wait and then also i had to go purchase me an animal without spot of blemish. if i could not afford a lamb i could get a turtle dove or so many pigeons and there had to be a process they had to kill the pigeon rain their necks off and blood had to be shed for every sin that i would commit but when jesus died on the cross his blood was that indelible blood that no human being, no laundry, no cleaning process could what? Once our heart has the stain of the blood of Jesus on it, nothing can wash it. That's the song said, what can wash my sins away? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Jesus' blood is power. Loving Jesus fulfillment of the perfect law of God. As we read in Romans uh, chapter 13, verse 10, in the New International Version, it reads, love does, does no harm, harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Love completes what the law failed to do. Love fixes what the law left out see there's no love in the law amen there's a love but the love of jesus christ for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life love brings peace to our human relationship the love of god brings peace to our human relationship. not hollywood love 
but that agape love that only comes through the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, what about this agape love? See, love won't allow us to hold grudges. Grudges won't permit me to gossip and talk about my friend. Love won't allow me to steal or do anything wrong to my neighbor. Love won't allow me to have family squabbles, amen, and the like. Love won't let me say anything evil to my wife. It won't like to say anything evil to your husband, amen. See, love will only allow you to have relationships as determined in the Bible. This the epitome of love of Jesus Christ. Romans 12, 18 reads, If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. I'll say it again. If it is possible, and it is possible, as far as it depends on you, it dep if it has to be, it begins with me. Live at peace with everyone. See, this is the law of Jesus Christ, God's perfect high priest. Finding real peace. Finding real peace. Finding real peace. Peace comes from knowing Jesus completely. The new system of faith which has been established is not without an oath. See, there is an oath if we're going to walk with faith. Faith has come from hearing, hearing by the word of God. The former Levitical priest had to pledge a ceremonial oath. It is not necessary for God to give an oath for Jesus because what? He cannot lie. Psalm 110, 4, we're going to be repetitious. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind or lie. God cannot lie. God does not lie. God has never lied. And God said this with all truth. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. He was talking about Jesus. He spoke these words to Jesus before we open up the book to the New Testament. He had already spoken these things into play. He spoken his oath into being when he said, You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Because Jesus lived forever as eternal priest, we are guaranteed a perfect peace in the world. When we faithfully obey and follow his every word. And Romans 10, 17, being repetitious and redundant, faith comes from hearing. And hearing through the word of Christ. Once we hear the word of Christ, then faith is affirmed and confirmed in our personship as we walk with Jesus. As Jesus told the lady, a man who had touched the hem of his garment and her blood uh, disease, a man, uh, a man came to a halt right there at touching Jesus him. He looked at her and she looked at him with apologetic eyes. And he said, your faith has made you whole. See, Paul said, faith is such things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So the best thing that we could have toward God and the Son, the Holy Ghost, is what? Is faith. Faith connects us to God's holy deity. It is faith. Amen. Peace. Come from knowing Jesus completely. St. Corinthians 13, 11 reads, Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. We can rejoice when we've got Jesus. Strive for full restoration. 
Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Say, finally. See, Paul is finishing up. Amen. He said, finally, brothers and sisters. He said, what? Rejoice. First of all, because we got Jesus. We can rejoice. We can shout. He said, strive what? For full restoration. He said, what? A complete makeover of what we have become to being what God designed and made first man to be. But you know, we strayed because of the fall into God. He said, now encourage one another. See, we have to encourage each other because we all had them down time. And the devil's always trying to come and mess our situation up. But we have to what? Build up each other. He said, be of what? One mind. Have one mind and stayed on Jesus. Live what? In peace. Love in peace. Work in peace. He said, and the conjunction, he said, and the God of love and peace will be with you. When we strive and make our everyday agenda peace, then God is going to be with us. As he said, I will never leave you. I won't forsake you. And I won't leave your seed begging bread. He, I mean, he assured of us of this. And Hebrews 7 verse 25 in the New Living Translation read, he lives forever to intercede with God on their behalf. Amen. He lives forever. So Jesus Christ intercedes over Jesus Christ. Well, he is the middleman between us and God. He said, God's spirit, no man come to him for it except he come through me, what Jesus Christ said. So he intercedes. So he is the intersection between us and God. So he talks to God on what? Our behalf. See, we can't just go directly to God. We got to go through Jesus. See, there are many other religions that would tell you they believe in God, but they don't have Jesus. And Jesus Christ said, we can't get to God. We can't just jump through everything else and go directly to God, we got to go through Jesus. We got to honor the Son. We can't disrespect the Son and expect the Father to what? To respect us. We got to respect the Father, the Son. So we got to go through Jesus. So Jesus Christ is our intercessor. He is our go-between, between our stuff and going to God that God can fix our stuff. Amen? Amen. So intercede is a present tense. Is in the present tense, a verb, present tense verb, which means right now, Jesus is working on our behalf for us and carrying our situations and problems for God to fix, which only God, whom only God can fix. Peace comes from knowing Jesus completely. We don't have to worry about offering or sacrifice. Jesus did that once and for all the Calvary. You don't have to worry about saving yourself with good works, as Paul would say. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Jesus goes on. To give us this blessed assurance and promise. I came that they will have life and have it more abundantly. I came that they will have life. Not only do we have just rest, but I'm going to give them an abundance of what God gives me. That's what Jesus Christ said. That they might have it more, not the minimum, but he's going to give us an abundance of what God God in heaven, and he want to bless us with it. Should there be one, more than one, a many, who might not have that secure and dedicated connection to Jesus, our Father in the high heavens, and his ever-present Holy Spirit, today is the day the Lord has made just for you. We encourage you to accept this invitation to Christian ciphership that God through Jesus 
will give you a forever salvation that is tamper proof. In John 10, 28, he said, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. So once we are saved by the blood of Jesus, we never get unsaved. Now, as Paul said in Romans 3.23, we do every now and then come short of God's glory. But coming short does not mean that we lose our salvation. Once we are saved, because Jesus said this, and God's not lying. He said, I give them eternal life. In other words, those who have been saved, and they shall what? Never perish. No one, not even Satan, will snatch them out of Jesus' hand. Listen carefully as the Apostle Paul guides you into accepting this open invitation to Christian discipleship in the following letter to the Romans. Romans 10, 9. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Very Short, very to the point, a letter from Paul directing us how that if you are not saved right now, if you don't have that relationship with God, if you're not hermetically sealed, amen, by the blood of Jesus, you can get saved, signed, sealed, and delivered today by what? Declaring with your mouth. Make that declaration that Jesus Christ is Lord. And then what? Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And you too will be saved right now. Not yesterday, not in the future, but right now. With that test, let us pray. Father, now in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you and we bless you. We thank you for this word. And we thank you that you give us your word and that we will go and to the highways and byways, spread this good news of the gospel of your son, Jesus Christ. And for that one today who have confessed their mouth, Lord Jesus, and who have testified they believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, that they are saved right now, blessed right now, Lord, and give us traveling grace. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank you, Lord.